Hey peeps, we're back here talking about nasogastric tubes, otherwise known as NG tubes. We'll just go through the basics here. I'm not going to talk about how to insert them, but I will talk about how um, to look at them on an x-ray, the different tube types, and then some of the orders to go through and when we can pull the NG. Oh, there's my aim. So just a disclaimer, I am not a radiologist. Um, your institution may have different protocols and you should know these and follow those. This is for educational purposes and is not medical advice. And I don't own any of these pictures and I made this document a long time ago. And so I don't actually, uh, give credit to any of the pictures, but none of them are mine. So this is what your typical NG tube looks like. Um, I want to especially point out that there is a radio opaque marker along the side and then the proximal side hole. So you can see there's holes here. The proximal side hole is indicated by um, a short break in the radio opaque line. And uh, it's important to know where this side hole is and we will go over that in the next couple slides. So there's two different tube types and it's really important to know which type your institution uses and i will say that most institutions use the salem sump tube uh the, this levin tube is just like a normal tube that you would think of uh, and i think actually this is what most people think of when they think about placing an ng tube is that it's just this one single lumen tube used for suction however this salem sump tube consists of a main channel and uh, it's kind of blown up over here, but you have a main channel and then you have a secondary sump channel. And um, this secondary sump channel is an air vent port. No medications can go down here. This actually helps equalize the pressure and prevents the tube from adhering to the stomach wall. So this is why some institutions can use continuous suction is because you have this secondary channel that prevents the tube from adhering to the stomach wall. Um, others, or maybe in the past when we were using this Levin tube with just the one channel, you would use intermittent low suction. That way, if this was a stomach wall and your tube was stuck to the stomach wall, the intermittent suction allows it to kind of pop off. You don't have that problem with the uh, secondary channel. And so, um, we'll just go over quickly how, uh, looking at these x-rays, you should always get a confirmatory x-ray when you are placing an NG tube. Um, the correctly positioned NG will pass vertically down the esophagus and into the stomach. Uh, the esophagus is not visible on a plain chest x-ray, so it's essential to understand the different anatomic landmarks in relation to other visible structures. The ideal position of your NG tube, the tip and the upper side hole, as we talked about, are both going to be located clearly between the GE junction and the pylorus. We'll go over that in this next slide. And so this is a nice picture of a correctly placed NG tube. And so to confirm that it's positioned safely, you should look at these criteria. You should see the chest x-ray viewing field, including the upper esophagus and extending below the diaphragm. The NG tube should remain in the midline down to the level of the diaphragm. It should bisect the carina. The tip of the NG tube should be seen clearly. Um, but below the left hemidiaphragm and the tip of the NG tube should be approximately 10 centimeters beyond the GE junction, i.e. within the stomach. We'll just go over a couple of NG tubes gone wrong. So, um, oh, I actually can't go back a slide, but the previous slide, if you scroll back a little bit, was a correctly placed NG tube. Um, here is an NG tube in the bronchus. Here is an NG tube in the lung. I think it's nice to see some wrong ones before looking at a right one. And then this, um, some may say, oh, this looks like maybe it's in the correct position. However, this is not far enough. Note where the tip is here. However, the suction hole isn't at the tip. It's actually further up, the side hole. So Although the NG tube is likely in the fundus of the stomach here, the side hole, which is where the um, suction is created, is most likely still within the esophagus. And so um, NG tubes that are not inserted to an adequate length can then result in reflux or potentially even aspiration. So this would need further inserting, and I'm sure the radiologist would look at this and tell you that you need to insert it further. And then you would need to reassess with another x-ray. 
Okay, so now that the NG is in place, you want to look at your orders. Um, at some institutions, you will need to place an order to put the NG to suction, so you should know that about wherever you're at. Some, um, once the NG tube is confirmed, the nurses can hook it up, but others, you physically need to put in the order. You don't want the NG just sitting there, not on suction. Um, you want to add a GI prophylaxis with protonics or pepsid to prevent GI bleeding, uh, maintenance fluids, as well as daily labs. Uh, for comfort, you can add a throat spray or throat lozenges, and then observe and record outputs daily. As far as fluid replacements, um, this can vary by institution, but um, typically you can see that for every one cc of output, you would give 0.5 cc, 0.5 ml um, of LR or normal saline um, per shift or every eight hours. And so when can you discontinue the NG tube? I feel like this is something where if you're not always rotating on ONC or somewhere where NG tubes are placed pretty frequently, you can forget. Um, just note that this varies by institution. And like I said before, you should know what your attending's like. But um, the normal amount of fluid produced by the stomach in 24 hours is at least 1.5 liters per day. And when you think about it, um, you you want to see that the majority of this fluid is being moved through the stomach and the intestines. So if you think about yourself, uh, this fluid isn't all just sitting in your stomach, it's moving through your intestines, um, but at any given time, you will have some stomach acid in the fluid. It, you will have some fluid or acid in the stomach. So therefore, we like to see this NG output less than 500 cc's over a 24 hour period. And this can vary, some will say 600 or uh, less than 200 cc's per shift. Um, and we also use clinical signs of bowel function um, to make this decision on when to discontinue the NG or when to do a clamp trial. And so some clinical signs of bowel function will include flatus, having a bowel movement, the patient feeling hungry. Um, and once you convince yourself or have some data that hints you that um, maybe the patient is ready for a clamp trial, that will be your next step. And so what is a clamp trial? A clamp trial is when we will take the NG off of suction and we will just let the patient sit. Um, theoretically, the fluid is building up in the stomach. The stomach is producing this stomach acid. We are hoping it's going through the stomach. Um, this can last for anywhere from four to six hours. Um, it definitely can vary and we will always take in um, the clinical scenario into account. So um, it, the hours can be adjusted, the residual can be adjusted depending on your clinical suspicion. And so we take it off suction, clamp it, and then in your say six hour clamp trial, after it's done, um, the entire time you're going to be watching the patient to be sure they don't have any nausea. Um, nausea would be a sign that they're failing the clamp trial. Um, so say no nausea in that six hour period, you hook the NG back up to suction and you see what is the residual amount of fluid left in the stomach. If at the end of the uh, clamp trial, the if the suction is less than 100 to 200 cc's, then we say that the clamp trial has been passed and the NG can be removed. Um, the residual amount will vary, and I do think, um, as I just said a minute ago, you do need to take in the clinical scenario and your, use your clinical judgment to determine what the residual should be. That's the end of this. Uh, NG to basics, I would say, as I've said several times in this presentation, always know your own hospital or institution's protocols. Never assume that things are being done. Always double check yourself and just keep providing great care. If you like uh, these presentations, leave a comment, maybe comment down below uh, what your institution does for their clamp trials or what they like to see as their um, output and subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks.